So now, I'm assuming that you know the cranial nerve functions very well by now. If you don't, I would suggest you do so. It's going to make your life easier here. Um, but we're going to talk about cranial nerve lesions. So what happens when you damage a cranial nerve? Uh, there's a couple ones we're going to focus on. The first one is cranial nerve 5, which is the uh, trigeminal nerve. And we're going to talk about physical exam findings here. So the physical, this one's a little hard, so I'm going to explain it to you. Um, basically, the jaw will deviate toward the side of the lesion. So if you have a left cranial nerve damage, remember these, all your cranial nerves are paired. If your left one's damaged, your jaw is going to go left. And the reason is because of the lateral pterygoids. Um, these are the muscles innervated by cranial nerve 5, and they normally push the jaw to the opposite side. So if you knock out um, only one of them, your right one's still going to work. And it's going to be pushing your jaw to the left, and you have nothing on the left to counterbalance it, so your jaw ends up left. Next one is cranial nerve 10, and the uh, physical exam finding will be your uvula. Um, I want to explain this. Remember that cranial nerve 10 raises the soft palate. Okay, so if you take out the left side, if you take out the left side, the left side doesn't work. Right side soft palate goes up. This side is this uvula. This is the uvula right here. It's going to go up as well. But because only one side is going is uh, raised, the uvula will be deviated, and it's going to be deviated to the normal side. So it's deviated away from the side of the lesion. The next one is cranial nerve 11. Uh, do you remember which? What is its function? What will your head, remember it does the sternocleidal muscle, mastoid muscle. So what side will your head be turned to in if your cranial nerve 11 was damaged on the right side? Well, the answer is your head's actually going to be turned to the, um, well, actually the answer is you can't turn it to the left side. The reason is because cranial nerve 11 is responsible for the external cloud and muscle turns your head to the contralateral side. So if you, if you knock the race, let's say the right side out, you have difficulty turning to the left. Um, and uh, we'll focus on this picture here. And if you know that the external cloud and muscle, mastoid muscle um, basically is attached to your head right b below your ears, all you have to do is push on, push on that area right, right below your ears. Just push on it, just pull on it. Push or pull. It's where your head turns, turns to the opposite side. So all, it's all you have to do to remember that um, how sternocleidal and mastoid muscle works. Remember that it's attached right below your ear. Push right, the pull right there. Your head will turn to the opposite side. Trapezius muscle is ipsilateral. It's simple. So if uh, your right side doesn't work, your right side's going to droop because it's not going to be raised up. Finally, cranial nerve twelve. Um, I just honestly, I just remember this. Lick your wounds. Tells you your tongue will deviate to the towards the side of the lesion. It's the same concept as cranial nerve five. Um, basically, the the nerve the nerve innervates the tongue muscles, which help um, basically push it to the contralateral the other side. So if it's knocked out, the tongue deviates towards side of the lesion. So the way to remember all these because you have to you do have to remember which side is which side your lesion will end up being. Um, uvula is easy because it's soft palate elevation. Totally elevation. Um, this one just remember the how the sternocleidal mastoid works. Just remember that pull on that right below your ear, and you'll be good. This one you have your nice mnemonic here, like your wounds. And then so I honestly for me the fifth nerve, the jaw deviation towards the side of the lesion. I just lump it together with my lick my wounds, and I call it a day. So tongue and jaw both de uh, deviate towards the side of the lesion. All right. And then now we're going to go on to